Daddy's been a bad boy. Please stop. <laughs> he sure has, because I'll be looking into which GTA 5 protagonist killed the most during the course of the story. Since this game is a sandbox, let me lay down a couple ground rules first. No side missions will be included. Trevor will easily have the upper hand since his rampage missions net dozens of kills in a short amount of time. Any incidental kills will be counted though, so if a civilian gets in the way, then they are on the board. I'm only counting what happens from the prologue to the final mission, so anything that happens outside of that is not going to be considered. And finally, this is entirely dependent on which characters you choose to play as during certain missions, so I tried to split my time up as evenly as possible. The prologue begins nine years prior in North Yankton, with Michael, Trevor, and their bud Brad all masked up for the stick-up. Things seem to be going well until a hero attempts to stop them, but Trevor has a clear shot to his face and fires it through for the first kill. After switching to Trevor here, I continued playing as him as they fought their way through the waves of cops outside, which netted Trevor the majority of the kills at 15, but I did see Michael shoot a couple himself while Brad got one measly kill. During their getaway, Michael causes a cruiser to crash pretty damn hard, but I'm unsure if they died in the wreck so I'm gonna leave them off. Eventually, they find themselves in town with both Brad and Michael getting sniped from a bitch ass camper, which leads to a mini rampage from Trevor as he racks up another 8 kills to take the early lead. But there's too many even for this psychopath, and he regretfully leaves his friends behind as police swarm in. Michael pulls a John Raffio and we bounce forward nine years to present day. We switch characters as Michael points Franklin and Lamar towards their destination, and they repossess a couple of vehicles and race them back to Simeon's dealership. On the way there, Franklin accidentally obliterates a couple civilians along the way for his first two kills. Simeon gives the antagonistic pair a new job that isn't as simple as the last one because the bike isn't where it's supposed to be, and the neighborhood is not very welcoming. Lamar is able to claim two kills of his own, but Franklin shows him exactly why he earned Employee of the Month by getting 12 kills himself. The next mission doesn't feature any kills. Instead, it introduces Franklin and Michael in a much more meaningful way when he attempts to repossess Michael's son's car. He forces Franklin to drive it back to his employer so he can whoop his skeevy little ass. Sometime later, Franklin shows up at Michael's house looking for some mentorship, but his idiot son Jimmy got caught up with some bad people trying to sell Michael's yacht. This leads to a high-speed chase on the highway as they try to save Jimmy and both Michael and Franklin go halvesies on the four available kills. Franklin and Lamar link up again, but this outing is a relatively peaceful one as they use Good Boy Chop to hunt down a member of the Ballas gang and eventually have to let him go due to Lamar's dumb decisions. Michael gets home to find out the tennis coach he's paying is getting a little extra on the side. Franklin pops in just in time to witness the drama, and takes part in a chase through the hills that results in Michael pulling a whole ass house down. But in his fit of rage, Michael doesn't question how a tennis coach can afford a house like that, and finds out the hard way that someone much more dangerous owns it. He sends men after us, and Franklin deals with all four of them easily. But the leader of a cartel, Martin Madrazo, forces Michael into paying him the $2.5 million it's going to take to fix his home. He may be rich, but not rich enough to have that money offhand, so Michael calls his old pal Lester to inquire about a job. Before he pays him a visit though, he unwinds by forcing his son to hang out with him, but his anger boils over when he's told his daughter Tracy is out on a boat with folks in the porn industry. He saves Tracy against her will and takes her back to the beach. After failing to relax with family, Michael meets Lester at his house and is tasked with infiltrating the Life Invader offices and rigging a prototype phone with a device Lester provided. Michael drives home to watch the keynote speech of Life Invader C. CEO, and once it's time to show off the new phone, Michael calls it with an explosive result. We leave Michael there for now and join Franklin at his house, with Lamar walking up with their fresh out of prison friend Stretch. But friend is a bit of a stretch, since it's clear Franklin is not a fan of this dude. But regardless, they have a deal to get to and meet the man they previously kidnapped. They learn it's a setup and Stretch takes quick action. But there's a whole lot more ballas outside that need killing and Franklin pulls in front of Trevor by taking down 25, while Lamar and Stretch get five between the two of them. All that shooting brings the police down on them, giving us the chance to earn another three kills to pad his stats a little bit. And while Franklin's life was being threatened, Michael was dealing with his wife trying to steal some shit, despite having the money to buy it. Michael is the only one with optional missions that deal specifically with his family, but since that's an important part of his story, I'm going to include those here. He helps her out here, but doesn't kill anything except maybe any love she still has for him. With his wife out of trouble and his favor to Lester cashed in, Michael meets up with him again to begin a job that will net him the capital he needs to pay off Martine. There's a high-end jewelry shop he scouts inside and out. 
out. There are two approaches here, the loud way or the smart way. GTA Online's Casino Heist confirms the smart approach is canon by referencing the bug starts disguise utilized during this mission. Since I chose this method, the preparation and the actual job itself are uneventful death-wise. Michael, Franklin, and their hired help escape with the goods without any blood on their hands. Michael, however, makes a fatal error dropping his signature line right before their getaway. You forget a thousand things every day, pal. Make sure this is one of them. And while Michael and Franklin celebrate their job well done, it switches to Trevor banging away, watching the news until a familiar quote pulls him right out of it, and into a murderous rampage that starts with a previous protagonist from GTA 4's The Lost and the Damned. Johnny gets done real dirty here. Trevor continues the theme of killing bikers by shooting a couple on the road and massacring them at their own trailer park. The itch hasn't been entirely scratched yet, however, and after telling his friend Wade to go locate Michael and Los Santos, he starts beef with another gang by killing Ortega and effectively taking control of the gun and drug trade in the desert. He attempts to secure a deal with the Triads, but in hindsight, maybe stashing them inside an icebox as he wipes out the rest of the Azteca gang was a bad idea. But on the bright side, he retakes the lead from Franklin with 31 more kills. He goes home to his trailer to find the bikers came and ransacked it, which means more gotta die and Trevor is going to make sure they pay for breaking his impotent rage statue. He drives to an airfield and completely decimates the bikers there with the help of his meth head friend Ron. Trevor snipes, mows down, blows up, and runs over and barrel rolls some bikers using a plane to take a strong lead by adding another 43 kills. <laughs> But wait, there's more, because the Triads elected to partner with the inbred O'Neill family, and that transgression leads to yet another rampage from the most level-headed GTA protagonist. He lights their house on fire and heads to Los Santos after Wade successfully finds Michael's home. On his way out, he stops at the biker's trailer park again and blows up their abodes. It doesn't appear we kill anyone here as everyone is outside and far enough away from the explosions to survive. Trevor doesn't wait around to confirm either and finds himself a second home at Wade's cousin's apartment in the city. Mid-family discussion, Trevor saunters into Michael's home, much to their surprise. Once Jimmy alerts everyone to Tracy's tryout for the reality show Fame or Shame, that gets Michael and Trevor moving. They embarrass Tracy but not as badly as they embarrass Laszlo. Michael meets with his FIB agent and gets chastised for the jewelry store job and is told he's going to do him a favor in return. He's tasked with locating the body of Ferdinand Karamov, a suspected terrorist and informant who has been pronounced dead. Dave believes the folks at the IAA are keeping him elsewhere, so he KOs Michael to make him look dead so he can successfully sneak into their morgue and verify Dave's suspicions. While inside, he eventually wakes up, choking and punching the first people he sees, but since he only knocks knocks them out, they aren't being counted. He's able to confirm Ferdinand's body is not there. He proceeds to eliminate 22 members of the IAA as he fights his way out of the morgue. He meets Dave and his boss Steve Haynes afterwards, who assigns Michael the task of freeing Ferdinand Karamov from IAA custody. But he doesn't have to do it all by himself. He calls Franklin and Trevor for the first collaboration between our three protagonists, but not all three of them up their kill count during this mission. Trevor is a pilot and is assigned helicopter duty while Michael does some Mission Impossible shit to get the FIB's man, and Franklin provides sniper fire. The two of them split the kills evenly at 12 each before they fly back and hand the informant over to the FIB. Fortunately for that man, he goes from being tortured by the IAA to being tortured by the FIB. In a controversial mission, Trevor stays back to get information out of Ferdinand, while Michael and Dave head out to find a man named Tahir Javan, who the FIB believes to be an Azerbaijani terrorist. On the way there, some asshole runs a green light and gets T-boned into the afterlife. Eventually, they set up across the house of the suspected terrorist, and after a few rounds of pain, Ferdinand provides enough details of this man for Michael to make an educated guess and snipe him during a party. Steve orders Trevor to kill Ferdinand, but instead, he takes him to the airport and tells him to get the hell out of the city. Soon after that's finished, Trevor pops up unexpectedly at Franklin's house and inserts himself into their business by tagging along to a drug deal in good old Grove Street. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Their boy Stretch set up the deal and while initially it seems to go well, Trevor reveals they're trying to screw them over, resulting in a firefight between the three of them and the Ballas. I play as Franklin during this whole fight and kill off 22 gangbangers here, but I do see Trevor take down seven of his own before the mission is finished. And while they're off fighting for their life, Michael is doing the same at home trying to do yoga and getting drugged by his son. Then on to what is probably considered the worst story mission overall due to its length and tedious nature. Trevor convinces Floyd to sneak them into 
into his workplace so he can gather intel on his ship. Once he has what he needs, they head back to the apartment and begin plans for Trevor's own heist. This results in Trevor preparing for the job by stealing a mini-sub, which he does so with zero issues at all. Whereas the military chopper he needs to steal results in 8 more deaths as he invades their compound and makes them look horrible when one civilian is able to pull that job off no problem. With all the preparations complete, Trevor calls Michael and Franklin over to Floyd's apartment and informs them of a job he planned out in order to steal a test weapon out at sea. On the way to Trevor's airstrip, Michael decimates two motorcyclists because he hates bikers. He's assigned to chopper duty while Trevor navigates the ocean floor in search of the weapon. But as soon as it's moved, the mercenary group Merriweather descends upon them, requiring Franklin to unload on them. It appears there's four men per boat and per chopper, which bumps Franklin into triple digits and makes Michael look like a slacker in comparison. They successfully complete the mission, but Lester urges them to return the device unless they want the US government on their ass. From there, Franklin's skills are utilized by Lester in order to manipulate the stock market and earn them some cash. He's hesitant to do this, but Lester assures him the people he's killing are assholes, so all is good. Franklin snipes the fool and makes his getaway. The FIB calls in the three amigos yet again, telling them they need to rob the IAA of some funds they earned through drug sales. They need to obtain those from an armored vehicle which requires some tools to pull off. The first are boiler suits Trevor purchases from ammunition, and then some masks, then a trash truck that Trevor steals from a couple city workers with one of them heading to an early grave. Finally, the final item needed is a tow truck, and the poor unfortunate soul that happens to be nearby receives a similar death to Johnny. Then with everything in place to pull this off, Michael goes over the plan. Trevor will take to the rooftops for lookout duty so they can communicate the whereabouts of the armored truck. Franklin will wait in the alleyway in the tow truck so he can ram the armored truck while Michael places the trash truck in the street to block its path. It doesn't appear that anybody dies when the armored truck is flipped over, so they grab the funds and face the heat coming their way in the form of the Los Santos PD. Franklin carries the team on his back here, shooting down cop after cop after cop as he inches closer and closer to Trevor's lead. However, he's up top putting in some work sniping and blowing up seven more to keep the lead. Whereas Michael seems to be AFK for most of it and only gets one measly kill. He delivers the goods to Steve Haynes' pal Devin Weston, who offers Michael a job stealing some cars. He declines and offers to get him in touch with Franklin instead. Devin then claims he'll get him in touch with famed movie producer Solomon Richards, which piques Michael's interest a whole lot more. Now despite telling Devin he's not interested in Grand Theft Auto, he's roped into the first job alongside Franklin and Trevor. They steal a couple high value cars from some rich douchebags and deliver them to an even richer douchebag without a single drop of blood being spilled. The next one pairs Trevor and Franklin together to steal another vehicle, and it has them track a man named Chad to a parking garage that turns out to be his final resting place. Franklin shoots him and takes his car to add to Devin's collection. And while they do that, Michael meets Solomon Richards and convinces a couple of troublemaking creatives to stop their holdout and continue making the movie they signed on to make. Michael gets to rough up an agent, but aside from that, everything is done peacefully. Afterwards, he gets a call from his favorite cartel, who asks a favor of him. He loops Trevor into the deal, which he'll come to regret later. But for now, they're assigned the task of killing Martin's cousin Javier, who is set to testify against him. Problem is, he's taking off in a plane soon, so the only way to get to him is by bringing the plane down. So Martin conveniently set up a heavy rifle for Michael to use to damage the plane enough to ground it. As it makes its descent, Trevor chases it down into the desert and shoots Javier and another person nearby, then grabs the files that will ensure Martin stays a free man. In the process, Trevor confirms the pilot died in the crash, which will go into Michael's total as he shot the plane down in the first place. Once that's all said and done, Trevor pulls up in Martin's car and reveals he kidnapped his wife, much to Michael's chagrin. Oh no! Oh shit! What the fuck did you do? While those two are caught up with Martine, Franklin sneaks onto a movie set in order to steal another car for Devin. In the process, he runs over a security guard and the actor he knocked out in order to get on set. He ejects the actress in the passenger seat, but I don't believe she dies as I never saw or heard anything that confirmed otherwise. Franklin pulls up to Michaels and gives him a call, learning he's hiding out in the desert with Trevor because of his shenanigans. Meanwhile, Trevor's partner Ron informs him of some incoming Merriweather weapons that Trevor is itching to steal. He races to his airstrip, running down a civilian in his excitement, and gets into a crop duster and chases the plane down. Merriweather begins shooting at him, which causes Trevor to crash the plane directly into the hatch, and gun down everyone inside except the two morons who jumped off the side of the plane without parachutes in order to avoid the incoming plane. Once he hijacks the plane, the US military sends some jets his way and shoots it down. They meet with Dave and Steve at Trevor's meth lab, where they find out another job is being forced on them that also requires them to source all the equipment themselves, including a military 
military grade helicopter that will cost them north of two million dollars. Michael phones Lester and they get together to scope out a bank in the desert and put together a plan to rob it dry. You know Michael is close to insanity at this point because he willingly tags along with Trevor's next venture as they head to the airstrip while Franklin is tailing the remaining three O'Neill brothers. Eventually, a deer causes them to crash their vehicle and run into the forest. So Michael uses a sniper fit with a thermal scope to take them out, but the third brother brought a surprise of his own and tries shooting them down with an RPG. Luckily, Franklin has Chop at his side, who leads him directly to the final inbred. With Trevor's bloodlust satiated, we shift focus to preparation for their upcoming bank robbery. Michael pulls off to the side of the road and waits for the military convoy to round the corner and opens fire, netting 8 kills in the process of stealing their large truck. Once they're all prepped, they meet up again and kill time by yelling at each other until Franklin tells them to shut the hell up. Franklin is assigned to getaway duty while Trevor, Michael, and their hired help will hold up the bank and take the cash. A large police presence waits for them outside, which mandates the use of heavy armor and guns. Trevor is rocking a minigun, which means I'm sure as shit going to play as him as they shoot their way through the streets. I'm able to confirm six kills by Michael during the madness that ensues, but obviously Trevor gets the lion's share at 42 until they're four into waiting for Franklin. He uses a bulldozer to plow through the barricades, claiming the lives of six before catching up to the other three. Using the bulldozer as a shield as the worst armor crews ever attempt to take them down using tanks. They pull up to a building and it's here I switch over to Michael, who downs a whopping 32 members of the military, nearly doubling his body count in one mission. They hop onto a train to end the mission with the highest overall body count in the game. Riding high from the previous mission, Trevor learns of a Meriwether train that's scheduled to come through. He guesses it contains gold or something just as valuable they can steal from the mercenary group. Michael tags along again, but they split up so Trevor can board the train while Michael waits in a boat under a bridge. While on the train, Trevor KOs the conductor, but doesn't kill him. However, it's possible he dies during the collision that takes place on the bridge. I won't count him here since we don't know for sure, but what we do know for sure is that Meriwether will show up to attempt to recover what's stolen. Trevor's hatred towards the group is much stronger than their training, which results in the death of 26 men. Once they get to safety, they examine those stolen goods. Michael thinks as long as they return his wife and offer the artifact, they'll be able to calm Martin Madrazo down again. Now that our guys have the cash, they purchase the chopper needed to pull off their next job. The three of them meet Dave and Steve and are briefed on the job they're about to go on. The goal is to steal a dangerous chemical weapon from the IAA. Initially, Michael is armed with a stun gun, but once they have the bioweapon, Michael switches to regular guns. That nets him 18 kills and finally gets him over the triple digit mark. He places the bioweapon into a refrigeration unit outside, so Trevor can pick it up and fly it back to the airstrip. But Steve Haynes puts himself at risk pretending to be a victim of the thieves in order to make sure everyone else gets away scot-free. We join Trevor as he makes his way to Floyd's apartment and finds that his girlfriend is finally home and she is none too pleased about the state of her apartment and the sight of Trevor. My daddy was not nice to me. She loses her shit and pulls out a gun which scares Floyd enough to pull out a knife. The game skips forward, showing Trevor emerging completely covered in blood and convincing Wade to accompany him to their new home. It shows blood on the window, implying Trevor killed one or both of them. We don't know for sure what transpired, but we're going to count them as two kills in Trevor's corner. He brings Wade to a nearby strip club, claiming that's gonna be their new home. He leaves them with a couple ladies and heads to the back to speak with ownership. It's confirmed a little bit later that he claimed the ownership title by killing the owner himself. The whole crew meets at the club to discuss preparations for their next big job. The one they have always wanted to pull off, which is robbing the Union Depository of all its gold. With Lester's help, they survey the building and find a way in determining the construction going on underground can be used to get inside the safe. But that job is going to get put on hold for a little bit because a whole lot of drama is about to unfold. Trevor still believes their old partner Brad is alive in prison, but what he doesn't know is he's residing in Michael's grave in North Yankton. He eventually connects the dots and rushes out to their old stomping grounds with Michael on his tail. They meet up north sometime later, with Trevor discovering the truth. But in all this chaos, neither of them realize the triads were following them. Their arrival gives Trevor enough distraction to get away while Michael is left to fend them off. He takes out 24 of them as he works to get his body count to a somewhat respectable number. Unfortunately for him, Trevor made his car inoperable on his way out and he falls into the hands of the triads. We pick up with Trevor back in Los Santos as Lamar calls him about Devin's car stealing jobs. Him and Franklin are about to nab the final vehicle and haul them all to Devin's assistant. They have a long drive out to the desert that may require Trevor's help. With the final car on the truck, they begin the drive out there, but eventually the 5-0 catch wind of things and pursue them. Franklin climbs out and uses that car from the movies to lay down spike traps and shoot at anyone who gets in the way, resulting in the 
death of just one cop and two civilians. They make the delivery, but Devin refuses to pay them up front, claiming he invested what he owes them and will only pay out after the heat dies down. Now wondering where Michael is, Franklin gets in touch with Trevor, who admits the triads kidnapped him, but outside of that, he's not going to assist him any further. So with Lester's help, he locates Michael in a meat factory and goes insano mode on the triads in his rescue mission. He brutally knocks off 23 of them before we switch to Michael hanging upside down and killing 9 of his own. On their way out, they team up and kill a few more before jumping into a car and running down a couple civilians and finishing off the final two pursuers. And now that he's free, Michael stops by Solomon's office to find him getting beat up by the agent he knocked senseless earlier. He chases them down and ensures they'll never lay their hands on anyone ever again. After that, Michael hears from the FIB and he's called up yet again to do their dirty work. Their stunt against the IAA has the Bureau investigating Steve, which will uncover a whole mess of corruption including his dealings with Michael, Trevor, and Franklin. He needs to find a way into the Bureau's offices and delete the evidence they have against Steve. He promises to wipe Michael's file clean in return. Lester lends a helping hand and accompanies him while they tail a janitor home. He willingly hands his work uniform to Michael, stating he just needs a vacation. I hear that. Now that he has a way inside, they need to find the layout of the building and a reason to get the others inside. Franklin is assigned with obtaining the architect's plans of the building, so he tails the man to a construction site, KOs his ass, and brings him back to Lester who comes up with two plans. I choose the fire crew route, which requires a fire truck I hijack right outside of Michael's home. Once everything is in place, Michael heads into the offices to perform some janitorial duties so he can plant some C4. With that part of his job finished, he heads out the doors and joins Franklin and their hired help outside. The bombs are triggered and they rush to the offices posing as firefighters. They navigate the crumbling floor and successfully locate the evidence, but the fire splits them up and forces Franklin into some unexpected fighting against these seven FIB agents looking to play hero. They were repelled down an elevator shaft and debrief at Lester's home in celebration. But Michael is looking to end this unwanted partnership, so he rushes out to meet with Dave and demand they part ways. But Steve, the IAA, and fucking Merriweather all show up as well. This culminates in a massive firefight that has everyone shooting at one another. But Michael's focus is to survive, and Trevor's timely arrival helps him do that. Trevor is able to increase his lead by 14. But Michael's no slouch here as he narrows the gap between himself and Franklin with 31 kills total. To celebrate, he successfully reunites his family and brings them back home and proves he'll do whatever it takes to keep his family safe, including brutally running over Tracy Stalker and fleeing the scene. He follows up with Solomon only to find Devin waiting in the office instead. He realizes he's been helping Devin this entire time by ensuring the movie gets made just so Devin can pull a Warner Brothers and Batgirl the movie to write it off for tax purposes, then shut the studio down and utilize the land for something more profitable. His assistant leaves with the film reel and this shit gives Michael a conniption, resulting in him chasing Molly down and sending her high anxiety ass into a panic. She speeds all over the streets of Los Santos and onto the runway of the airport until she flees into a hangar and gets sucked into a turbine. While Michael's presence may have caused this to happen, fault falls entirely on Molly for being a fucking idiot. But regardless of that, the cops want someone to blame and Michael fits the bill. He downs a couple of them himself and takes off in a plane, then lands that on a highway and finds out the film was shot digitally anyway. We cut to Franklin chilling at his home when his ex Tanisha shows up begging he go help Lamar's dumbass. He got himself captured by the Balas and may be executed unless Franklin pulls some hero shit. So he calls Michael and Trevor to assist and they meet at the Balas compound. They attack from three angles, and despite this being Franklin's mission, he comes away with the least amount of kills at 11. Michael barely tops him while sniping at 12. Trevor nets more than both of them combined with 24. Franklin drives Lamar back to the city while telling him that Stretch ain't their homie and keeps trying to get them killed. He leaves him with a little cash and finds the FIB around the corner demanding he kill Trevor. Michael gets back to the city just in time for his movie's big premiere, but that's soon soured by Devin's vague threats towards his family. He rushes home to find Merriweather there just seconds away from turning Michael's family past tense. This puts him into rage mode and finally gets his kill total over Franklin's for a solid second place. He continues to show his dedication to his family when he saves Jimmy from being kidnapped by a dude he trolled way too hard on Xbox Live. No kills happen here and this wraps up his optional family quests. Now it's time to get to the big job they all want to do. There's two options and I went ahead with the obvious option here. This requires some prep to get the job done properly. The the first thing they need is a train to haul the gold away, so Michael KOs a couple railway workers and sends a train Trevor's way. While it's stopped
stopped, he uses a chopper to pick up the engine in one flatbed and stashes them at the airstrip. In order to get into the underground vault, they need a big ass drill to penetrate it. Michael eliminates five guys before he drives the drill back to Lester's hired help. With everything in place, they all meet up at Trevor's strip club and change clothes, then set out towards the Union Depository. We start off as Franklin, while Michael and some hired help pretend to do an ordinary robbery to cause a distraction. He drills a hole into the vault and they begin to take the gold out, but police show up and find themselves in a no-win situation. Franklin puts down 26 of them while their help secures the gold. They attach it to the choppers and Trevor and his help lift it out of the hole and out of the city. While they do that, the others need to fight their way off the streets. So Franklin joins up with Michael to do exactly that. This scene reminds me of the movie Heat, with these guys shooting their way to a parking garage containing their getaway vehicle. Michael takes out 19, whereas Franklin is the MVP, totaling 38 more alongside his mentor. I lose the police inside a tunnel, and we switch over to Trevor, who has to deal with Meriwether trying to get some revenge. But Lester is feeling a little murdery himself, and shoots them all down from Trevor's chopper. They successfully place the gold, and reconvene at the airstrip in Glee. But Franklin can't even bask in glory for too long, because Devin shows up at his house uninvited and asking him to kill Michael. This begins the final mission, and forces Franklin into making one of three decisions. Does he kill Michael? or Trevor, or neither, and turn the tables against Devin and the rest of the assholes they've been dealing with. To me, that's an easy decision, and option C is also confirmed to be the canon ending. He calls Lester and they work out a plan to set up an ambush at a foundry. Franklin calls his old pal Lamar to tag along and meets Trevor and Michael at the foundry. Lester puts out some intel saying they'll be found there, which leads to the FIB and Meriwether invading the building and succumbing to the heavy firepower we have in store for them. Franklin comes away with the most at 23 while Trevor is a very close second at 21. Michael brings up the rear at 17 kills. Once that's finished, they all agree that every single loose end needs to be tied up so this type of shit stops happening. With Lester's help, they locate the triads, Stretch, Steve Haynes, and of course, Devin Weston. They split up from here, with Franklin hunting down the triads and swiftly removing 11 of them from San Andreas using a grenade launcher. Michael runs down Stretch and blows up a couple ballas that chase him down. That leaves Trevor, who claims he's been wanting to kill Steve Haynes ever since he first met him. He blasts his head off and quickly escapes escapes the pier so he can drive out to Devon's home and kill another eight Meriwether soldiers before kidnapping the rich idiot. He drives out to the coast and patiently waits for Michael and Franklin to show up. They open the trunk and talk their shit before the three of them push the car over a cliff. It's not a very far fall, so I doubt Devon died right away but the explosion sure helps make that certain, and the final kill of the game can be attributed to all three of them. To the surprise of nobody whatsoever, Trevor claimed first place with 316 kills altogether. It's only right the murderous psychopath got the top spot, but not far behind him was Franklin at 309. For someone who seems way more level-headed than the other two, he killed a hell of a lot of people without a second thought. And bringing up the rear is Michael, who put in some work in the latter half of the game to make things somewhat close, netting a total of 273 in all. He's a family man after all, and just doesn't have the time for all that. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and maybe leave a like to show the algorithm what's up. Thanks for watching, I'm King DeShane, signing off for now.